on Wygand Street here in Port Richmond, the North Shore section of Staten Island. This entire street was devastated by Sandy. All five of these houses washed out. You can see they're in different uh, different stages of disarray. One, one house behind me is full of mold. It's very obvious if you just peek in the window. All of these houses were inhabited by um, undocumented immigrants, uh, very low-wage immigrant workers and their families and um, they were displaced because of Sandy. Some of them are still in the evacuation center today. Uh, others have, are living with family and friends. Uh, this just is really an example of, the, of the, the vast reach of Sandy's devastation for Staten Island. We think of it as the south and east shore devastation, but here on the north shore as well, there were hundreds of families affected. So I'm from Project Hospitality, and we are an interfaith effort that works with hungry and homeless people. So this was a natural for us to become involved in the disaster. At first, our work centered on evacuating people the day before the storm and then providing for evacuation space during the storm, after the storm, and continue to run the evacuation centers today, 10 months later. Uh, in, in the weeks after the storm, we gathered clergy from uh, an, an array of different denominations and affiliations, Jewish clergy and Muslim and Hindu and Christian, Catholic, to ask ourselves the question of where we could be of most help, how the churches and how the houses of worship could continue to provide support in the disaster areas and how we were going to organize that support to people on the ground, the different hubs and points of distribution. And we began meeting uh, November 12th, uh, two weeks after the disaster. Uh, by December 27th, we had uh, pretty much formed ourselves into a coalition and in January, visited by FEMA to hear from them that we were actually at the at the the seeds seed planting of the long-term recovery organization for Staten Island which is what we've become we're now an 85 member coalition uh, we span uh, additional coalitions that have joined on to us including connect to recovery which is a Jewish coalition and all of us together are working voluntarily on the rebuild effort and these groups, if they're unskilled laborers, there's, there's plenty to be done in terms of providing food to the disaster area, doing housing needs and uh, assessment surveys and going door to door to find out what people's needs are, hosting help, help fairs for, for the different Sandy families. And for the skilled laborers, there's houses to rebuild, one house at a time. We had 22,000 households affected here in Staten Island, 7,000 people displaced, several hundred people still displaced and not in their homes today. One of the great coordinating features is of this coalition, of this long-term recovery organization, is our ability to, to, to garner the help of our houses of worship to host groups that are coming in to do the recovery work. So from Temple Emmanuel here in Port Richmond and Faith United Methodist Church to the Presbyterians and the Lutherans, and, uh, and, the, and the interdenominational churches and our Pentecostal churches, we are able to house groups of up to 60 volunteers at a clip and provide for them uh, appropriate showers. Our local Moravian church, New York Moravian church, is, is hosting our showers for all of our volunteers that need showering. We're able to get the word out to folks that we're available. There, there's some cost incurred to help the churches where, where it's needed and where it's not needed. We're able to do this for free. But we have to provide for volunteers to come in because this is a long recovery. There are so many houses that need to be repaired. There are so many lives that need to be restored. And we need all of the help hands on deck to make us, to make us accomplish house to house the restoration to the fullest degree possible of every sa family affected by Sandy and suffering by Sandy today.